this video covers the steps to utilize the Proxim Blue Connect smartphone application. Uh, Proxim Blue Connect application is used to configure the Edge product line. Available for both Android uh, minimum of version 7 and iOS uh, minimum of version 10. It also uses uh, Bluetooth low energy to connect to the devices, a max of uh, 15 meters or about 50 feet. It provides uh, the following features, uh, scan for available devices. We can configure uh, such uh, settings as radio mode, uh, system information name, location, IP configuration, wireless configuration, wireless security. Uh, we can also reset back to factory defaults. Um, it also provides us link information such as link details and link quality. Okay, so before we get started, um, let's kind of cover the uh, QR code uh, because uh, Proxa Blue Connect does use the uh, QR code. Okay, so as you can see, here's the code, right? And at the bottom here, we have, uh, it says Proxim, and then we have the last six of the uh, MAC address, the Ethernet MAC address, as you could see right here. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and cover this. So uh, when you do the QR code, uh, you'll know what you're looking for. And when you do the Bluetooth, okay, it's also going to go ahead and pick up the same number. All right, uh, Proxim, and again, here is going to be a last six of our Ethernet MAC address. Okay, so let's go ahead and cover the uh, Proxim Blue Connect uh, software for both uh, Android and iOS. Uh, this is going to be uh, software to uh, connect to and manage the Edge product line. Okay, so right now we are on Android. As mentioned before, this is supported by both Android and iOS. I'm not going to go ahead and cover the uh, installation portion. Uh, we're just going to go ahead and run through the software itself. All right, so uh, let's go ahead and begin. Uh, go ahead and click on the icon. Okay, I'm going to go through this little welcome. All right, so it's going to have to uh, go through its paces here. Okay, this takes a little bit. Okay, so when the app first uh, starts, uh, you're going to get a series of two requests. Okay, uh, the first one's going to be uh, Blue Connect would like to access your location. Uh, so what it's doing, it's using the, uh, the phone's built-in GPS okay to gather its coordinates all right this is something that's gonna uh, that you're gonna see later on uh, when you go through the configuration all right that's that's covered okay but uh, that's what this is so just go ahead and click OK okay and the next one it's asking you to give permission to access this device location which again is uh, for the GPS okay so go ahead and click allow okay and then uh, we could start so here is the main page right? let's go ahead and cover this really quick all right up top here all right so this is going to be a version number and we have different languages okay let's go ahead and go back all right sorry let's go ahead and go back here all right so we have two options uh, we have scan and we have qr code okay so, um, as mentioned before, uh, you're going to have to know your uh, Ethernet MAC address, or at least the last six of the Ethernet MAC address, right? So, go ahead and click Scan. Okay, so what we have here is our two radios that I have. I have a, uh, an Edge base station and a subscriber, okay? It's not going to tell you which one's which. Okay, uh, again, you're going to have to know what the MAC address is, and that was covered uh, uh, previously. All right, so go ahead and click back. All right, and here is our QR scan. All right, now you're going to have to be fairly close to the QR scan. Okay, uh, the Bluetooth scan, because it is low energy, as covered before, it's about 50 feet. All right, but the QR scan, obviously, you're going to have to be right next to the radio. All right, so we're going to go ahead and click the scan. All right, it's going to uh, ask us to take pictures and record videos. Allow. All right, and then is the scan. You can see it picks it up automatically. All right, here is our uh, password. All right, the password is one, two, three, four, five, six. All right, 
click OK. And that is it. All right, so that is the default password. Uh, you could go ahead and change it anytime, and we uh, highly recommend that you do change it. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at uh, uh, menus after you have a connection. Okay, so this is the link details. All right, so we have uh, the base station, the subscriber. Okay. Uh, it just shows you the basic information here. If you have a device name, the network name, right, uh, your data rate, channel, uh, the wireless, your IP address, okay, uh, and for the subscriber, right, if you have multiple subscribers, you could go ahead and pick them there, all right, and then of course the data rate, the local data rate that it's connected on right now. And then we have the link quality. Uh, that's something that we're going to go ahead and cover here um, in a little bit. All right. So let's go ahead and click back here. All right. So let's go ahead and click on the, um, and the hamburger buns. All right. So status. That's where we are right now. All right. We have configuration and then reset and reboot. They're kind of self-explanatory, but we'll go, go ahead and cover that really quick as well here. So let's go ahead and click on configuration. Okay, so um, again, since this is the base station, uh, as you can see, the radio mode for base station, it could be either a, a BSU or an SU. If you are in an SU, it won't, you're not going to have that option. It's just going to say SU. If you are in a quick bridge, you're going to have the option for both uh, EPA and EPB, endpoint A, endpoint B. All right, we're going to go ahead and click OK. And then antenna type. Uh, we have integrated and uh, um, external. By default, uh, integrated is enabled. Um, you have this use configuration template here. So the very first time that you connect to uh, one of the radios, this is actually going to be grayed out. Okay. Uh, this goes for any of the radios. Okay. Uh, and to be honest with you, this is really just going to work a better on the subscriber uh, then in the base station because uh, you're going to have multiple subscribers so after you run uh, configuration okay you're going to save it, you're going to reboot now you're going to see it right over here it's going to pop up you're just going to check it and it's just going to fill out all of uh, the details other than say like the radio uh, name and the ip address and so on but most of the other settings are going to remain okay so let's go ahead and click next. Okay, so up next is going to be the system info. Um, here is just some basic info. You could just type in the device name, you know, uh, warehouse A, warehouse B. Okay, the location, that's all it is. It's, again, the location of the particular radio. It's, it's just a, uh, it's for informational purposes only. Okay, uh, next down is the... Uh, local GPS. Okay, so we have enable and disable. So if you remember in the beginning, we had a say yes uh, for uh, the system to allow to use the phone's GPS coordinates. Okay, as mentioned, when you enable, it's going to use the coordinates and it's going to populate over here. Okay, so by default and disable, it's just, uh, just a generic set of coordinates uh, that we entered. Okay, again, when you enable, it's going to use the phone's GPS coordinates. Right? After you're done, uh, just go ahead and click Next. Okay, we have our IP address. Okay, it's static and dynamic. Right? By default, it is static. And, of course, uh, your IP address, mask, gateway. And then go ahead and uh, enter your primary DNS. Okay, next up is going to be the wireless configuration. Now, based on the uh, radio that you have, um, depending on the country code, if you have a, uh, an FCC radio, world radio, okay, the, the country codes, uh, the channels you're going to have are going to be different. In this case, this is a U.S. radio or a FCC radio. You can see that we only have uh, the channels available, uh, okay? So here we have operational mode. We have HT, which stands for high throughput, and VHT stands for very high throughput, okay? Um, HT is going to be for backwards compatibility between the uh, 8200 series radios and the 
uh, 800 series radios, okay? And VHD is going to be for the uh, 10,000 series radio and the edge radio as well, okay? Uh, we have channel bandwidth. We have uh, 20, 40, 80, okay? We have uh, our auto channel select, um, depending on what channel uh you select if you have DFS, this is going to automatically uh, be enabled, especially on the uh, subscriber radios or on an endpoint B. Okay, um, do recommend that you leave this disabled on the uh, on the base station and on the endpoint A. And then we have the uh, preferred channels. Okay, go ahead and select the channel, All right? And of course, uh, uh, with auto channel select on the subscribers, it's going to pick those particular channels, All right? Okay, so next we have the wireless security. All right, we have the network name. Uh, make sure that the network name is the same um, on all your radios. Encryption, by default, it is disabled. If you want to enable it, go ahead and select the checkbox. ASCII is 16 characters, hex is 32. Uh, there are restrictions on uh, uh, what characters you'll be able to use. Uh, we do recommend that you refer to the user's manual for those restrictions. Okay, and we have uh, commit and reboot. Go ahead and press that. Yes, and uh, it's going to commit and it's going to reboot the radio. Let's go, go back up here and click on status. All right, so now we click on link quality. The colors are going to kind of indicate, you know, the status of the radio. Uh, green, pretty much all is good. There's yellow, some, some areas, and of course there's red, all right, which means that things are not good. All right, so... Go ahead and click on SNR, all right? and then it's just going to tell us local and remote SNR values, okay? Errors, all right? it's going to tell us what we have here for errors, as right now I don't have any, okay? But it will tell you the frame error rate, the CRC errors, and the physical errors, right? It's it's just like looking at um, uh, at the GUI when you log in with admin on the radios, okay? And then there is power. And it's just going to tell you uh, current power rating, and there's the uh, the TPC value, uh, transmit power control value. So that is basically that. Up top here, okay, we have the Bluetooth. Okay, this is going to this is our password connection. It's going to tell us what uh, the default passwords. It's just basically going to have to say, hey, you have to change these passwords. My radio, they're all defaults. Okay, okay, we have our Again, we have our languages, okay, and then we have uh, the option to disconnect if you want to, okay, and then we have, of course, this right here, which takes us uh, back to the main screen, okay. Um, if you need any help at all using this app, uh, by all means, go ahead and contact Proxim Technical Support, and we'll be more than happy to assist you.